day, Ezra chapter 3. And when the seventh month, and this is a month that has many feasts in it, we're going to look at one, was come, the children of Israel were in the city, and the people gathered them together as one man, unity, to Jerusalem, the capital. Then stood up Jeshua, that's the high priest, Joshua, the son of Josedek, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shatiel, and his brethren, and builded the altar of the God of Israel. Okay. Temple's destroyed. It's gone. They come to Jerusalem in the seventh month. The first thing they're going to set up is that brazen altar. They're going to set up an altar to God. To offer burnt offerings thereof. As is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Probably Deuteronomy 27 verses 1 through 8. And they set the altar upon his base. For fear was upon them because of the people of those countries. They're surrounded by their enemies. They just came out of Babylon. They're in a territory that, you know, there are more enemies than there are Jews. They're trying to establish, a, you know, with God, rightness. They've been destroyed. And they, bur they offered burnt offerings thereof unto the Lord. They're not going to offer it to God's now. Even burnt offerings morning and evening, that's Exodus 20, 24, and 26. You know, they have a, the lamb in the morning and the lamb at night. So, they're doing what the law is prescribed to do. They want to get right. They... They kept also the Feast of Tabernacles. Now they're in the land again. They've come back from captivity. And the very first thing they do is they set up an altar to God. Where the temple is going to be. The very first feast they celebrate in the land coming back from the Feast of Tabernacles. That's where they grab branches of trees and boughs. And they build these temporary shelters. And if you were to be biblically correct. And stretching my neck out. There is more scripture to show that Jesus was born on the, on the Feast of Tabernacles than there was any other day of the year. And if, if it's the Feast of Tabernacles, the birthday of Jesus, it's also the day when they come back to set up that temple. And Jesus said, hey, listen, never mind the stones, never mind the gold and the rock that play. Destroy this temple. And in three days and three nights, I'll raise it up. And you'll see the temple is like Jesus because Jesus said, I'm the temple. So as is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number, according to the custom, as duty of every day required. This would be Leviticus 23:44. So they're doing the law. And afterwards offer the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons, first of the month, and all the set feasts, Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, the wave loaves, trumpets, day of atonement, and then the tabernacles. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Of the Lord that were consecrated, so they don't have any other holidays and celebrations and feasts that God did not honor. Of everyone that willingly offered a free will offering to the Lord. Free will offerings when you give to God because you want to. And from the first day, Feast of Trumpets, of the seventh month, began they to offer burnt offerings to the Lord. But the foundation and temple of the Lord was not yet laid. There's no temple. Not even a foundation. That's how well Babylon destroyed Jerusalem. There's no even foundation of the temple. That great building that Solomon made, man, the Babylonians did a great job. Titus did a great job. They gave money also unto the masons, stone builders of stone, to the carpenters, and meat and drink and oil unto them of Zidon, and to them of Tyre, that's a city on the Mediterranean, 
to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the Sea of Joppa, according to the grant that they had from Cyrus, king of Persia. They're doing everything David did, and they're doing everything that Solomon did. To bring back everything they need. Remember Hiram? This is what's going on. They're paying money, they're paying for drinks, meat, and oil for the building materials needed for this temple. And all this is not under David, it's not under Solomon. It's under Cyrus, the king of Persia. Now the second year of their coming, so they've been in the land on the second year. One year has passed. They're in the second year. We're coming unto the house of God, which is not there yet. Get that. At Jerusalem, in the second month, began Zerubbabel the son of Shetio, and Jeshua the son of Josedek, and the remnant of the brethren, the priests, and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity, going into Babylon, come back unto Jerusalem, and appointed the Levites from twenty years old and upward, to set forth the work of the house of the Lord, which is not there yet. So, with no house there, okay, let's get the Levites together. Let's find out who they are, what they are. We saw that in chapter 2. Now, I don't know when that temple and all that is going to be set up according to the rapture. But I know it's going to be there. And if by chance, and I'm sticking my neck out, you can throw this in the garbage can. But if Israel starts finding out who the Levites are and starts setting forth that temple to be built, you guarantee the rapture will be soon. Now that temple and that setup of the priest may be after we're gone. Listen, there is no date for the rapture. Now we know a surety that there are seven years of tribulation, but we don't even know the date of that either. I'm wondering if that's what that all that genealogy thing the Mormons are doing is if they're trying to find the line of Aaron. That's that's exactly what they're trying to do, but they're doing falsely. And when you look at the Book of Mormon, they got non people, non cities. So, and as we know already, we've seen these programs you see on television. And they're lying. To, and they're just a bunch of deceivers. Not true. Somehow, some way, the only one that can trace his lineage back to Adam is Jesus Christ today. God is going to do something that the children of, of I'm going to say Abraham, the children of Aaron are going to be exposed somehow today. Those are the priests. I don't know how he's going to do that. Somehow the children of Levi are going to be, they are the Levites, not all priests are Levites, but all, all Levi, I mean, wait a minute. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. God is going to do that in order for them to do what they're supposed to do. There's a genealogy list somewhere out there. And the only one we have today of the Jewish line is Jesus Christ. And yet the Bible is full of the names. And so many Christians just read through it like, who cares? I, I had a man one time great in the ministry, and I had great respect for him, going home to glory. He says, what if your name is in there somewhere? Is not the Bible life? Or is not your names written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Wouldn't it be great one day God opens up that big King James Bible and goes to chap book number, I mean book name, chapter, and verse, and there is your name. I don't know. Maybe the Jews have to have knowledge of the New Testament somehow for those names. But it's coming back. So they're setting up the priests. I guarantee if if right, if those Israelites in, in Israel today are surely looking for the priests start getting found. And they're built one altar over there to the one God. You, you can guarantee set your clock. The rapture will happen without knowing when it will happen. But I don't know if we should go looking for the building of the temple. I see here when they're going to build the temple in Nehemiah, he's going to have enemies all around them. So I don't know. 
So they set up the brethren, 20 years old and upward. You say, well, how can we know? Let's say they start doing it. How can we know, know if it's right or wrong? Let's see what the Bible says. If they start setting a priest to do the work, if they don't set a standard of 20 years old and older, then it's not correct. If you got, let's say, 16-year-olds running around doing the, the temple service, that's not what the Bible says. You got to use the Bible. Then stood Jeshua, that's the high priest, Joshua, Jehovah saves, Jesus, with his sons and his brethren, Cadmiel, and his sons, and the sons of Judah together. Now, isn't that, isn't that interesting? you got the Levites and Judah together. Do you know the genealogy of Jesus? Do you know who Mary's cousin was? Elizabeth. You know who Elizabeth was according to Luke chapter 1? She's of the tribe of Levi. She's married to a Levite who is a priest serving in the holy place of the, the incense altar. Now, if Mary and Elizabeth are cousins, Mary is of Judah. She is. Uh, Luke chapter 3. I believe it's a genealogy. 2 or 3. When it comes to the line of Jesus Christ, there is Levi and there's Judah together. And here it is right here in Ezra. Chapter 3, verse 9. You can run that gene genealogy back, but they're cousins. That means they got to have somewhere along the line the same family together to set forth the workmen in the house of God, not yet, there yet, the sons of Hedidag with their sons and their brethren, the Levites. So the Levites are going to help build too. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in the apparel of trumpets. And the Levites, the son of Asaph, there he is again, with symbols to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. All right, let's look at two things that happened in verse 10. They have begun the, the temple's foundation. There it is. They start laying down the rock. The first thing you do with the building, the foundation. There it is. Uh, the second year and the second month, they lay down that temple. And there are a bunch of men singing and playing musical instruments of the family of Asaph. That man must have did right before God and David that here they are. And they still know who they are. And they have a genealogy list of who their father is, that they can stand up and say, this is our father, we can prove who we are, we're the musicians, get your instruments. And when that temple service comes in the tribulation period, you got to know who you are. You can't just step in there. The Jehovah Witnesses will be very gladly sad <laughs> that they will find out in the tribulation period they are not who they are because they can't prove that they are of the 12 tribes of Israel minus Dan and Ephraim. There is no Dan and Ephraim in the 144,000. Joseph is mentioned as a tribe and Levi is mentioned as a tribe. Uh, I don't care what you say about black Israelitism and all that and whatever it is. The people I see, and I'm, I'm being right and nice right, right now, the people I see who are Jehovah Witnesses in my area, in my city, are not Jewish because they're black and they're white Jewish people are are brown skin people think Jesus is white and is the beautiful Hollywood that ain't Jesus he's Jewish according to John chapter 1 Jehovah witnesses are going to be for a great shock when they can't prove who they are So we see again now when the temple, this is the temple being laid. We see we have family who they can claim who they are, and that's going to happen again in the tribulation period. They're going to be able to claim who, and they knowingly, excellently will be when Jesus sits down on David's throne and that temple of Jesus Christ. You better believe they are the right family. I'm going to assume that Jesus is going to head count who they are, but I don't even know that. Maybe open up the Bible and he's going to lay it out. Listen, at Revelation 20 says they're going to come up for and they're going to find, look for their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
And there are some names in that land's book of life. If they can find that person's name and not go off the lake of fire, I guarantee God knows who Judah and Levi is. He's just not revealing them to, to the Lord right now. He's not revealing to the people right now. Listen, every Jewish person, a son who's 14 years old, they're preparing for the Messiah. That's what the Bar Mitzvah is. I don't know why they do it for a girl. And they got a little name for her, for the female. There's no female Messiah coming. And then when I'm told it, there's not really that love to build a temple. It's a, oh, oh yeah, okay, making a lot of money here. So there's Asaph. Mark his name down. It's just remarkable. And they sang together by courses in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord. It's an or, or, orderly fashion. I guarantee they're not doing Christian contemporary music. I guarantee it's not flesh. I guarantee. Why? Because he, God, is good. God is good. For his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. Israel will get that land grant in the new earth forever. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, the musician, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Man, there is this great celebration when that stones are laid. Asap, they're singing, the people are shouting, there is great joy. But many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers who were ancient men, old men. Remember, they've been in the land for 70 years. You figure a man that was 10 years old, he's 80. If he was 20 when the temple was destroyed, he's now 90. If, he's, if he was 30... He's a hundred. I'm going to stop there. There are people here in Ezra chapter two that saw uh, chapter three saw that temple before they went off to Babylon, and now they come back. From what they saw when they left is not there no longer, and they got to rebirth, redo what's done. The magnificent temple is now destroyed. That seen the first house, Solomon. When the foundation of this house, their building, was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy. There is a confusion, but there is no confusion. People are crying and weeping, the old men. The, the young men and all that are we are are hallelujah great to God. The old people, the the, the, the old the old men and old women, they're looking back saying, "I remember what that place looked like. I remember. And I remember the sins of what we've done to be here, and then why it's destroyed, and why we got to build again." And they are just repenting, and they are just sad. They're, you know, if we didn't get in this mess. We would not be here. We would have been still here. 70 years wasted in Babylon is what they're thinking. And those who are new and, and, and never been to Israel, never seen the temple. Man, hallelujah, we're going to serve God. We're going to do right. There are people sad and there are people happy. And there's another thing, too, that the old men know that the new men don't know. And Hollywood doesn't know. And you find the book of Revelation. There's something missing right now. And it's not going to come back. And it won't be there when Jesus walks in the temple of Herod. The Ark of the Covenant is gone. And I forget which chapter. In, book in, Revel in the book of Revelation. It's in heaven. They're going to have a temple. But they're not going to have the Ark of the Covenant no longer. And when you read that list of 2 Kings and Chronicles of all the things that the king of Babylon grabbed, the candlesticks, those two columns or pillars, 
the, the spoons, the snuffers, the plates, and all that. The day. There is no Ark of the Covenant. God took it. So that the people could not discern from the noise of the shout of joy and from the noise of the, of the weeping of the people. Hallelujah, it's great, it's built. Oh man, it was destroyed. When we look back, when Babylon took us, we look back, we saw it there, and we saw the army men, maybe they even saw it burning. Maybe they saw the soldiers destroying it. And the young men never saw that. They only heard about it. From the grandparents, maybe from their parents. So the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the now from the noise of weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a great I mean with a loud shout that the noise was heard afar off. And it's not a ball game, it's not a concert, it's God. We're back in our homeland that God said, I give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. After 70 years, sin costs. It caused an utter destruction. 